Um, and for those of you still watching, our next presenter is Carissa Fryer, and she's going to be presenting on student choreography. A lot of the dancers I look up to take a hold of this opportunity. I thought it would be a new challenge for me and push me to dance and create at a new level. It was certainly more of a challenge than I had expected. So now let's go over what is actually involved in creating a piece of choreography, because it is more than just choreographing. First, there's picking out the piece of music, which is a lot more difficult than one would think. For my piece, I knew I was choreographing for me and one of my close younger friends, so I wanted it to be more of a sentimental song. One would think it would make the process easier, but in my opinion, it actually made it a lot harder. Not only did I need to find a song that matched my theme, but I had to actually like it too. Next is costuming. Costuming this piece was pretty simple. I knew I wanted an everyday outfit, so I hopped onto American Eagle, and I ordered two pairs of jeans and two white tops. We wore our white top shoes to pull the whole look together, and our hair was parted on the left with a two-strand braid pulled back into a ponytail. Choreographing this piece was much harder than I ever would have imagined. Overall, it took about four hour and a half long lessons to complete and a few hours by myself working alone to figure out what was coming next for the wise and to make the choreography work with the music. The last part, competition, was unfortunately delayed due to COVID-19. We were able to compete once and the results will be later in the presentation. As part of my project, I interviewed five choreographers ranging in four to 49 years of experience in teaching and choreography. I asked each of them six questions. What do you do if you get stuck while choreographing? What training did you have going into choreography, such as college, companies, etc.? What made you want to be a choreographer or teacher? How has your choreography evolved over the years? How do you think of new ideas for choreography? And do you have any advice for young choreographers out there? For the next part of the presentation, I'm going to go through my personal relationship with each choreographer as well as the background and training that they've had. The first person I interviewed is Stacey Vigitelli. Stacey grew up in the dancer studio and her and I always maintain a close relationship. She is someone I look up to and as a young and new choreographer, it is intriguing to watch her choreography style change. Stacey's training has consisted of many years at the dancer studio and her four years studying at Montclair State University. Next we have Sheila Huggins. Sheila also grew up in the studio, but with a larger age difference, her and I were not as close. I always admired her for her dance style and amazing ballet technique. It wasn't until she returned and began choreographing pieces on me did our relationship grow. Sheila said that when she first began choreographing, she didn't really have any specific training for choreography other than her own exploration of movement or phrase work. It wasn't until she attended college and choreographic concept-based classes that she learned more of an intellectual way to look at a body of work and create it from beginning to end with a complete thought of purpose. In working with professional companies in college and after college, she was exposed to other choreographic tools and established her own vocabulary of movement to define herself as a choreographer. Next, we have Alicia Monaco. Alicia has been in my life since I was born and has been setting pieces on me since I was 13 years old. She grew up at the dancer studio and was taught by Sharon and Sherry. Her choreography has always amazed me, not because the steps were necessarily challenging, but because the use of rhythm constantly changes throughout. Alicia grew up dancing in her local studio where she had incredible training from many different teachers. She had the privilege of experiencing firsthand how they worked with their dancers and was able to perform the many different pieces of choreography they created. She was then given some opportunities to create choreography on herself as well as other dancers in the studio. When she graduated high school, she was hired to teach for quite a few dance studios, where she had the opportunity to create choreography on dancers of all ages. She also studied with teachers and choreographers in New York City and was a member of a professional tap dance company based in New York, where she performed pieces set by the company director as well as guest choreographers. All of these experiences had an influence on the choreographer she is today. Next is Sherry Bonanno. Sherry, or my mom, has been one of my instructors since I started dancing at the age of two. It is something that I've gotten used to, and it never really bothered me that she choreographed the pieces that I was in. She also grew up at the dancer's studio. Sherry studied dance at the dancer's studio through high school. She received a BA in dance from DeSales University in 1993. She performed with the Anita Feldman Tap Company in New York and began teaching dance upon graduation. She also received her teaching certificate from Dance Masters of America. 
She continues to teach children and adults at the Dancer Studio, as well as guest teaching, and her choreography has won numerous awards at the national and international level. Lastly is Sharon Nacrosta. Sharon, the director of the Dancer Studio, has taught all of the teachers previously mentioned, as well as myself. She is the reason I am as disciplined as I am in dance, and she has taught me since the age of two. I do not know anyone else who has been teaching for as long as she has, as well as she has. Sharon is a firm believer in the saying, the more you use your creative muscle, the more you have to work with. From way back to the pieces on her brothers, sisters, cousins, and pets, to setting a musical, there has been much training along the way. Trial and error are great teachers. Studying dance and theater in New York City gave her a varied background. She learned much in her own dance studio with her students, and she also had many years of working in summer stock in musical theater. Instead of reading each of their responses individually, I'm gonna kind of summarize them all together. That way it doesn't take too much time. For the first question, what do you do if you get stuck while choreographing? A lot of the teachers said the same thing, just in different words. If you take a step back, take a deep breath, and look at the piece as a whole, you can typically get some inspiration from that. Another way would be to take the energy that the dancers are putting out around the room and using that for inspiration. The second question was what I had just read from everyone, so that I don't have to summarize. For the third question, what made you want to be a choreographer or teacher? Everyone kind of said the same thing again, just in different words. They all mentioned that dance has been a part of their life from a very early age and that performing was one of their passions. They also tended to mention that they had watched the impact that their teachers had on the students growing up and that they wanted to recreate that when they were older. For the fourth question, how has your choreography evolved over the years? There were a variety of answers, one of which was as dance standards changed, her choreography was forced to change along with them. Another one was as the years went on, she gained confidence, which made it easier to find her voice. And lastly, one of them said that she doesn't compare her choreography to others as much as she used to, which made it easier to be more creative and be more in touch with herself and her own choreography. The fifth question is, how do you come up with new ideas for choreography? All of them said that this was a struggle as it's tough to be creative as often as we'd like to. One of them said that when they find a piece of music, they really try to picture the music itself and see what comes to mind when they listen to it. Another one of them said they take what they're feeling at that moment, whether it's while listening to the music or just right then and there. And lastly, one of them had said that she takes inspiration from her own life and what's going on in her own life and uses that to influence her choreography. Lastly, question six was, do you have any advice for young choreographers out there? Everyone said the same sort of thing, whether it was enjoy the process or follow your heart. But Alicia said that you should always be present and take in everything you can from experiences and opportunities presented to you which was also a very good piece of information to keep in mind. Up next, I have a couple of videos documenting the journey of choreographing the piece up to the final performance that we had gotten on stage.
the outcoming competitions. So before I tell everyone the outcome of the competitions, I'm going to do a brief breakdown of how competitions are scored and what each award means. So first we have our adjudications. Each judge gives each dance a score out of 100. 100 being perfect, zero being really bad. No one gets a 100, no one gets a zero. Each of these scores are added together to give your overall medal score. So this is like the participation part of it and you're ranked based on how good you do out of that 300 points. Next, you have your special awards. At each competition, there's typically one judge that is assigned to give out specials. And this is when they pick a couple dances throughout the day that really stood out to them and they point them out at awards for the reason and everything and they hand out an award for that. Lastly, there's overalls. Overalls are typically broken down to 12 and under and 13 and over. And that is your overall score from each category, and then just like your overall overall score, so the highest score that there is. So Spirit of Dance was the only competition that we got to perform live at this year. For our adjudication award, we got an elite gold, which is the highest medal. We got a special award. I won the student choreography award for that piece, which means out of all the student choreography pieces entered, mine had scored the highest. We won first place overall senior duo trio, and we won first place overall 13 and over. Due to COVID-19, some competitions have actually done virtual competitions where you submit videos of your dances online and they score you. So the Impact Virtual Competition, we made it into the top 20. We received two specials, I believe, and then we ended up 13 overall duo through production. So the last thing I had to present was how this experience changed my ideas on choreographing a piece. This experience was definitely a lot more difficult than I had ever anticipated. The creativity and the mindset that I needed to be in every time I stepped into the studio to work with my duo partner was very different than simply being a student and receiving choreography. I had to be careful not to be repetitive when coming up with steps and the rhythms had to be good in order to match the music. I was definitely super lucky to have the duo partner that I did because she put up with me when I was super frustrated about not being able to come up with the next step or anything like that. And hopefully we'll be able to compete more in the fall because I'm super excited to see how this piece will grow throughout the competition season. That's it. <laughs> nice job, Carissa. Thank you. Well, I have a question. The the pieces that you shared, they were in slow motion um, on purpose, right? So that you could see the moves? No, they weren't on slow motion. Oh, it looked like it was. It, no, however you did it, it was perfect because you could no. really see how all the moves were happening. The first few pieces, the first few videos that were in there were earlier on in the season. I ended up speeding the piece of music up, which okay. is why they were so slow um, at the beginning. <laughs> Wait, I, I mean, I loved it because you could really see the detail that went into each move and, and, and everything. So it was awesome. I really enjoyed it. Thank you. So I'm going to open it up to questions from the audience um, and comments. Mr. Macenti said, Carissa, amazing how your feet are in complete sync with one another. Wow. Your passion for dance is so evident. evident. I admire it. I know that the art will be a part of your life forever. Thank you for sharing that with us. 
Thank you. <laughs> See if anyone else has any questions. Do you do um, ballet and jazz as well as tap or do you just do tap? Yeah, I do everything. Tap is my favorite and probably my best um, mm -hmm. out of all of them, but we do ballet, tap, jazz, point, modern, acro. We do everything. <laughs> So tell us kind of what draw, drew you to this passion and what drew you to going into this project for Capstone. I've been dancing since I was two and thanks to my mom for making me do that. Um, I loved it right away. She didn't like force me into it or anything. And then like I had kind of said earlier in my presentation, I'd always seen all the older girls from the studio who I looked up to doing student choreography pieces. So it's always something that I wanted to do at some point. I assisted my mom in choreographing our duo last year, and this year I decided that I would try and do it by myself. <laughs> and um, I just have to say I'm really impressed with how you handled um, going into the coronavirus and the quarantine. Um, I saw on your time log that you put down that you did some Zoom sessions with some of um, your participants, and I think that that's, that's awesome, and that's great that you were able to kind of make it all work together. Thank you. Um, this is from Mrs. Camarco. Great job, Carissa. You're an amazing dancer. If you could do anything differently for this dance, what would it be? Um, I would, I don't know if I would do anything differently. I would probably try and get some more lessons in to clean it before going back to competition if that happens or anything like that. Or if the competition schedule had stuck to normal, I would have thrown in some extra lessons between each event to take what, because the judges give back critiques, so I would have taken all of those and had a lesson with Juliana and really gone through it to clean it more, but other than that, I really enjoyed how it came out, so. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then Angela Montgomery, um, I think this is, that's actually Juliana, her duo dance partner. I would like to thank <laughs> Rebecca for her inspiration. How long have you guys been partners for? This is our third or fourth year now? Okay. I think our, th our third year, I want to say. Long time. Yeah, but her, she's been at the studio, uh, I don't know when she started, but I've danced with her in the production since she started dancing, so years now. I've known her forever. <laughs> so what's next for you? What, what do you think you'll do with everything that you learned, and what will you do from here? Um, I'm going to be attending High Point University in the fall, and though I don't necessarily want to have a career in dance, it's definitely something I don't want to stop. So I'm either, I'm going to start as a major for dance, as well as my major, my major in exercise science, and see how I can incorporate my 17 years of dance in with um, like a medical major in somehow, in some way, whether it's orthopedics and specifically for dancers or something in that area. Awesome. I love that. I like the blend of it, all of it, the medical piece and the dance piece, and it really brings your passions together. <laughs> nice job tonight. I really enjoyed your presentation. I know it took a lot of work putting that video together and showing us all the snippets from your performances and leading up to it. So um, I think we can all say that we're really impressed. And one final comment here from Cheryl. Um, congratulations, Carissa. You continue to amaze your seventh grade ELA teacher. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right.